Okay, today we're going to look at the bubble sort and we're going to uh, design the algorithm for bubble sort and then we're going to implement it in uh, Python. So before we actually go to Python, we're going to look at this first and just make sure we understand exactly what the bubble sort algorithm does. So here we've got an array of integers. Um, the array size is 8 and we can see that it's unsorted. And the objective here is to end up with a sorted array. So if we imagine an iteration starting at position 0 and then continuing through the array, and what it does is it looks up the data that's inside position 0. And it will compare that to the next position along. So in this case, position 4. It asks itself a question. Is the item that I'm looking at larger than the one to the right? In this case, the answer is yes. So we would swap those items. And then we would increment along so that we're looking at position number one. We ask the question again. Is the item that I'm looking at here in index one, is that greater than the item at index two? The answer is no. So there is no swap. And we move along. We're looking again. Is the item at index 2 greater than the item at index 3? It is, so we'll swap those out. And move along again. And then we're going to ask the question again repeatedly. Is the item at index 3 greater than the item at index 4? It is. So we swap across. Is the item at position 4 greater than the item at position 5? The answer is yes. So we'll swap across. And now we're at position 5. And I'm just going to pause for a second to make sure that we understand. When I say swap, what I actually mean is that this value would have to be written to a temporary variable. This value could be written into position 5. And then the temporary variable could be copied back across into position 6. Okay, so we've done that one and we move along again. And now we're at position 6. Is this item 9 greater than this item here, which is 2? The answer is yes. And then we stop. And the interesting thing here is we have gone from 0 to 6. Uh, we don't go to position 7 because there's nothing else to compare it to. So with an array of eight items, we carry out seven comparisons. That is, we go from zero to position six. Position six is the length of the array minus two. We're now going to take that across, make sure we understand the Python to create this inner loop. The whole purpose of the inner loop initially on one cycle of it is to get the biggest integer across here like this. Okay, and that's exactly what's happened. OK, we're going to start off with a blank Python program, but we're going to go for the pseudocode first to make sure we fully understand exactly how this algorithm works. So I'm going to start by trying to work out the inner loop. Now, I said already that the inner loop iterates, and it iterates from 0 up to the array's length minus 2. And what happens then is a decision has to be made. We have to make a comparison between the array uh, at j, so in other words the item at position j of the array, is it greater than the next thing along? And if it is, then we would swap these items. Okay, and I said to you we will take a copy of whatever's in position J. We will overwrite position J with position J plus one. And then finally, we will put J plus one set to temp.
And so that's the pseudocode done. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to declare a really simple array. Um, Okay, so I've got an array, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to develop this uh, definition that we've got up here. Okay, now that definition is written in pseudocode, so we need to change it a little bit in order for it to be uh, appropriate for bubble sort. Uh, sorry, for Python. Okay, so I'm going to write for j in range zero to the length of the array minus one. I'll explain why it's minus one instead of minus two in a second. And here, if the array j is greater than array j plus one, then we will swap them. Okay, I'm just going to do bubble array and then I'm going to print out the array. I'm going to save that and I'm going to run that. And what we should have seen here is that the largest integer, which is 9, has ended up going across to the right hand side. And that's exactly what we wanted. So this is the inner loop of the bubble sort. A couple of questions. First of all, why is it minus two? And then minus one here. Well, the reason that this number has got to be uh, one larger than the pseudocode is because in Python, it goes from zero to less than length of the array minus one. In the exam, if you write it in Python, that'll be fine. Okay, so if in doubt, you can write it in Python. So this appears to be a procedure rather than a function. Okay, and it's a procedure because it passes the list or array by reference. And that means that it literally passes the address of the data into this uh, procedure and so it changes it straight away. It doesn't need a return statement. So we've managed to get the nine from here across to here. Okay. Now let's go back to the PowerPoint and see if we can work out how to repeatedly do that. We've carried out the first, or should I say the zeroth run of the inner loop. Okay, so the inner loop has run from zero to six. So it's run seven times. And then we pass control back to what will be an outer loop. And the question is, how often do we have to do this? Well, on the first occasion, the nine will go to the end. On the next occasion, if I compare these, I'm gonna do a little bit quicker this time. And then finally, when we compare eight and nine, there's never going to be a change there because nine is the largest integer. So we've gotten this one here. Okay. So on one occasion, we've put that there on the next occasion. And I should say the next run of the outer loop. So this is the second one that it would go there. Then an item would go here and then here and then here, then here and then here at position one. When you put this, the second smallest, integer into position one, the smallest integer will be here already. 
So we need to run the outer loop n minus 1 times. Okay, so in a similar fashion to the uh, inner loop. Let's go back to the uh, Python and see if we can do that. Okay, we're back at Python. I'm just going to go to the uh, pseudocode and I'm going to try and put an inner loop here. Now you might have noticed already that I called this J and I called this J because it's the inner loop. And here I have just indented it all and that way I can put an outer loop here which will simply run the inner loop from 0 up to array length minus 2. And so next, just to be correct with my uh, pseudocode, I would write next i. Okay, and that's the outer loop. The outer loop will run seven times. The inner loop will run seven times. And here, once again, I'm going to select this, click tab to pull it across, and then I'm going to write for i in range 0 to the length of the array minus 1. And so what this should do is it should entirely sort this array. And I'm going to just run that see if it works and yet yeah, that's worked perfectly fine and you might wonder well can you be sure exactly how it did work and what I could do here is I could put a print statement at the bottom uh, indented two positions so it will show me and it might be a little bit cluttered but it will show me how the array actually works so now I'm just going to focus on the output after each after each iteration of the internal loop. And we can see here, the nine is presented to the end. The eight gets presented to the end, then the seven, then the six, then the five. And it actually looks like all of these have been sorted already. So that's a little bit unfortunate and we can fix that now. Let's go back to the PowerPoint and look at some of the inefficiencies of this uh, algorithm as it stands. So the first inefficiency that we're gonna fix is this comparison where we swap these and we continue to swap these and that's fine however this is the third run of the inner loop the third cycle and then when I get to here there is no need to compare the 6 to the 8 or the 8 to the 9 because this is the third time we've had all the cycles of the inner loop and on the first set of cycles the 9 was placed here and after that there is no point comparing anything to the 9 because the 9 is largest so this suggests that each time we have the full cycle of the outer loop it should reduce by 1 in other words on the first occasion yeah we compare these two values but the next time, we only go as far as this. And then the next time, we only go as far as this. So that means that we will shorten the actual run of the inner loop by one each time. Let's have a look at that in practice. So what I'm suggesting is that the inner loop should be reduced by zero the first time. By one the next time that it runs for the full cycle and then two, and three, and four, and so on. And the way we can do that is by putting the looping variable there. Okay, and what that will do is it will shorten the, the inner cycle. This can be demonstrated by putting the print statement in here. I'll put, I will put a line break here so that it makes it obvious exactly what's happening. I'm going to run that and we'll have a look at the output. And what you can see here is the first time there were seven comparisons. But the next time, B 
because the 9 is already in the correct place, there is no need to compare the 8 and 9, so there's only 6 comparisons. The next time, 5 comparisons, 4, 3, 2, and then on the final occasion, there is only one comparison, these two values here. This final printout is the last printout, which is actually in the main body of the program. If I compare this, and we can see how how few there are, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. If I take away the I here and run that again, then we can see that we have got blocks of 7 each time. So that is the first improvement, which is to shorten the inner loop. Now the other thing that you would spot, and I'm going to pull this print statement back here and run this again. And the other thing you might spot is the fact that just because of the way that the numbers are laid out, after three iterations, the array is already sorted. And here, we just keep on running the set of inner loops because there's nothing to tell us, hang on, it's sorted already. So what we should do is we should be able to identify that there have been no sorts and if we identify that there's been no sorts, then we can stop the uh, searching, uh, sorry, the sorting algorithm, and we can return. And that way it'll be more efficient. And the way we do that, if we look at the pseudocode, is we simply put a flag here. And I'm going to call the flag swap. And the flag will be equal to false. And what, so what I'm saying here is that at the moment, I'm inside the outer loop, and I'm saying, okay, you run your comparisons. If you find a swap, then you'll be inside here, and you can set the flag to true. However, if after an entire run of the inner loop, if you have not carried out a swap, then we will break. Because that means that you haven't swapped anything. It means that the array is actually already sorted. So let's try to implement that in code and see if that works. So what I said before is we will make a flag and I'm going to call it swap. And capital F for false in Python. And then here, if we go inside here, we will set the swap to true. And then here, we will say, in fact, I'm going to stick it after these diagnostic print statements. If we haven't swapped, then we'll just break. Okay, and so that should work there. And I'm going to run that. And let's have a look at the results. And here you can see that it's run there, there, here, and then on this run of the internal loops, it didn't carry out any changes. And so consequently, it broke out. So there's only five lines there. And remember that this is just the final printout. These are all diagnostic printouts. There's only five lines there, and if I took away the uh, <coughs> the code that we've just entered, then instead of five lines, we can see there's actually eight lines of code here. So that is a significant saving. I'm just going to put that code back in. This is the bubble sort algorithm um, written in Python. It is not an efficient algorithm, but we'll be talking about that later on. You should practice that, writing that algorithm out, and also try to time it for a random selection of, for example, 1000 integers and see how long it takes. Okay, next video will be 
in the insertion saw. Catch you there.